crafters. So I follow a lady called Catherine Pooler and um, she has her own website, CatherinePooler.com. And she is a supply company for crafting supplies, stamping supplies. She sells ink pads and paper and stamps. Um, anyways, I don't actually own any of her supplies. This past week on her website, CatherinePooler.com, she uh, posted a card that she'd made that I absolutely fell in love with. It's beautiful. And I wanted to recreate it. Um, so I'm doing a series on using what you have. And I made a video of how I recreated her card. Um, and Catherine Pooler is just a wonderful resource. If you go there, she has tons of videos and hints and tricks and tips. And um, anyways, feel free to go and check her out. She has so many wonderful things on her website. Anyhow, I hope you enjoy my video of how I recreated this Catherine Pooler card. Okay, thanks. Take care. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. So I've pulled up my Cricut program here and I'm just um, getting some sprigs to put in behind my flowers. My rosettes are, three rosettes are on this card. So I'm just choosing those sprigs in the Cricut Design Space program and I'm sizing them here. This program is really easy to use and if you have a Cricut or you have a Silhouette or you have a scan and cut, those um, cutting machines fill in the gaps of everything that I don't have as far as a die. And my Cricut is an older model Cricut. Here it is, cutting out some of those sprigs. It's the very first Cricut that came out using the um, computer platform where you can design your own things in design space. Here it is cutting out one of the rosettes. Um, it still needs to be plugged into the computer. It is not Wi-Fi capable. It is the very first one that came out um, that had the design space inclusive on it. You don't necessarily need all of the newest things. Um, just use what you have. Here I have a the middle of the flower. I'm using a die cut for that. I could have used the Cricut, but I had this die cut handy and I like the shape of it. Here I'm just laying out the rosettes. I'm just uh, laying all the pieces out and uh, getting a feel for what my rosettes are going to look like and the layers I'm putting on them. And I used a glue pen for the little bits there, but then for th to put the rosettes together, I used a glue dot. Just I bought the glue dots at Michael's. And uh, they're a little tiny bit thick, like barely at all, but just enough to give the rosettes a little bit of a 3D feel. And that was perfect. So here I'm just uh, putting my three rosettes together. And I love the colors here, the kind of gradient or ombre look to these flowers. I just think it's so pretty and feminine. So in the Catherine Pooler card, I just was going off of a picture that I had printed off on my computer, trying to do mine exactly like hers, but it was really hard to get a feel of what size the card was. So I laid my rosettes out on the paper so I could kind of get a better feel for how it needed to be exactly. And then I cut my card base uh, using that layout so that I had the sizing correct. I'm just using the bone folder for the fold and then I trim up that edge there. And here I'm just starting to lay out the rosettes onto the card. And it has the same kind of stripes in an ombre as well. So I'm laying those out for placement just to get a feel. And then I glue them down. And I love that ATG tape gun. That is my go-to for adhesive every time. Unless it's something delicate, I will use the pen that I got from Michael's that you saw me use there, the blue one. But for things like this and putting card fronts onto card bases, it's always my ATG gun. I love this ombre effect so much. I think I'm going to try these stripes again, maybe in different colors. On Catherine Pooler's website, 
um, this past week, she did a couple of different stripe B colors. Um, she did some blues and teals, and I think she might have done some yellows also. I can't remember. Um, and I just really like the look of this, so I'm going to have to go back and play with those in the future. I had this punch handy. Again, I could have used my Cricut to cut out these leaves, but with the punch just being there and being handy, it was just easiest. Here I'm just placing the leaves and the sprigs behind the rosettes. Just, I'm looking at the picture of the Catherine Pooler card while I'm doing this and I'm just trying to do it exactly as she has it in, on her card front. And I'm happy with that. So now I'm just lifting, I'm taping down with the ATG gun right there so they don't move. And then I go around the rosette on the back side of it. And I'm that tape that I'm doing around each rosette is going to catch those flowers. So very little adhesive is needed. You don't need it to be perfect here. Then I just use my fingers to pop up or curl a little bit those rosettes just to give them more of a 3D or a more dimensional feel to them. So I don't have all the dyes or all of the newest products all the time. Um, I try to use what I have to improvise. Um, I know there's a lot of forums where you see a card and you're like, oh, I need that exact die or that exact stamp set. But if you already have a lot of um, sets that you love, um, you can absolutely use them in place of these other things like this flower. This is not the exact flower that Catherine Pooler used. And I could go to the pa Catherine Pooler website and I could buy the exact items that she used. But this came really close. I don't need to buy the exact items that she has. Here I'm literally using dollar store rhinestones to put in the centers of the flowers. And I chose this kind of greenish yellow. I thought it really brought out the nice light green in the card. And it went yellow with, it went great good with the yellow centers as well and then I was just following Catherine Pooler's card and she used these bigger rhinestones but I didn't love them once it was once I placed one down I didn't like it so I opted to switch them out for smaller ones so here I am off camera grabbing my smaller rhinestones and again I am just placing them exactly where Catherine placed them on her card Here I have the Hello, um, that's a Hello die from Stampin' Up, and I'm just cutting it out. My cat's here visiting me if you hear meowing. Um, so I put this Hello down, and it looks good here on video, but in person it didn't look good with being able to see through it like that. So I decided to do what Catherine Pooler did on her card and just put it onto a white background and I fussy cutted it. So here I am just gluing it down onto the paper and then fussy cutting around it. I can't wait until you guys see the final project, like my card versus her card. It is so cool how close I came. Um, there are a few differences, but they are so subtle that you can hardly tell at all. And uh, like, I, like I've been saying, use what you have. And I hope that these series of videos on using what you have really 
help you to showcase the products that you already have in your homes and help you to not feel the need to run out and buy the latest and the greatest. And everything takes time. You know, I never had all the products at first. Um, I've built up a supply. I still don't have all the products. Obviously, I don't have any Catherine Pooler products, but I'm uh, using what I have. And that's what I love about crafting is it doesn't have to be exact. It can be um, kind of a creative resemblance, I guess you could say. Um, here, I'm just taking the backs off. And this is where the final reveal comes in. So this is what my card looks like. I just love this. I love these ombre colors. I've been in a very pink mood lately, as you can tell, by my nail polish and by this card front. Um, and I just, I really like this look a lot. Those stripes just, oh, love it. So here is my card. And I'm about to grab the paper with her card. Here's the big reveal. Ta-da! Use what you have. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful week.